All right, solving trigonometric equations, solve by isolating trigonometric expressions. So when you're solving trigonometric equations, um, you we've done this before, but kind of on a very small scale. Um, you're actually looking for x, which is the angle itself. And so they've given you this equation that has multiple trig functions in it. And your goal is to figure out what angle solves this equation. Now, I will say they do this a couple different ways, and I am not going to do it necessarily the way that they do it as far as their answer goes. Remember when we did um, arc, tangent, arc, sine, etc., there were specific quadrants that we dealt with. So for sine and tangent, it's the first and fourth quadrant. And then for cosine, it's first and second quadrant, right? Because And that just isolates it so that you have one positive and one negative quadrant for your, for your trig function. Um, in this case, they actually do it as like a rotating... Um, function, meaning, oh, this is going to happen every pi, this is going to happen every two pi, and I don't necessarily need you to do that, and so we'll talk about it when we look at the way they answer these. So, solving by isolating. So, you'll see here that you have two tangent of x minus square root of three, and that equals the tangent of x. Like any good algebraic equation, you want to isolate what you're trying to solve for. And so, in this case, I'm going to move all my tangents to one side, everything that doesn't have a tangent to the other, and then I'm going to try to um, solve for what angle will work here. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to move this tangent over. And it works like anything else. Uh, two tangent of x minus tangent is just one tangent of x. And then I'm going to add the square root of 3 over to the other side. So I'm going to have tangent of x equals the square root of 3. And so my goal here is to find out what angle gives me the square root of 3 as a tangent, all right? And so remember, go back to your brains, tangent is sine over cosine, right? There are two angles that deal with square root of 3 in their sine cosine. Which two angles have square root of 3 in their sine and cosine? A square root of 3, square root of 3 to 1 half, those are the two that flip-flop between these two angles. What are they? Pi over, no, pi over six. and pi over three. three, right? Okay. And so we're looking for the one that the sine is the square root of three over two. Yeah. So because we have square root of three over two over one half, that's going to give us a tangent of square root of three. So that is going to be pi over three, my 60 degree angle. So I know that x can equal the pi over three. All right. Now here's what you here's what they do. They say, well, that's going to occur um, really every pi. So they did it as like a cycle function. So in their answer, they have pi over three plus n times pi because that's going to occur every cycle. You're going to see square root of three appear, and you'll notice that on your unit circle that appears in the first quadrant, and that also appears in the third quadrant, right? So if I take my first quadrant and I add half a circle to it, that tangent will appear there. And if I add another half a circle, it'll appear again and another half a circle. And so that's what they have done. They have said it's going to occur every half circle. I don't necessarily, I'm not going to require you to do that. My questions are going to say, um, either it will say between zero and pi. They said between negative infinity and positive infinity, right? Um, I would either tell you, I want to know where it's going to happen between actually 0 and 2 pi. So either 0 and 2 pi, or sometimes I'll say negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Like just, just the limitations for sine, cosine, and tangent, or whatever those are, okay? And so my instructions may be a little bit different, um, and I think I typically do 0 to 2 pi. And so if I said 0 to 2 pi, you'd actually have to list two, two angles here, okay? Because in the unit circle, think back to unit circle... Yes, it occurs at pi over 3, but it also occurs down here, okay? And so you'd have to give me both of those. So this is 3 pi over 3. It would also occur where? It would occur at 4 pi over 3, right? Yes, so you'd have to say 4 pi over 3. Okay? Make sense? Because that's the other place where you will have a positive square root of 3 as your tangent. 
So if I were to give you these limitations, you would have to list both times that it happens in the entire unit circle. All right, but I am not gonna make you, if you look at their answer in the book, they have pi over three plus n times pi. I'm not gonna make you tell me like the rotation of it. I'm just gonna make you list it twice. All right, so go ahead and try guided practice number one. They gave you sign here. When we have a sine squared, and our, we're still going to get the sine squared completely by itself. So I'm still going to subtract that 1. I have 4 sine squared of x equals 3. Divide both sides by 4. Sine squared of x equals 3 fourths. Take the square root of both sides. Sine of x, you do have to consider the positive and negative root. Root of 3 is just square root of 3. Root of 4 is 2. So I'm looking for a sine value of square root of 3 over 2. And in this case, everywhere that it's positive or negative. So it will be every single quadrant if I do from 0 to 2 pi. Okay? Because it will alternate. All right? And so what uh, angle gives me a sine value of square root of 3 over 2? right, which is pi over, pi over three, pi over. right? So I have pi over three. That will be my first quadrant. What's my second quadrant, pi over three? Pi over six. It's four pi over six, uh-huh. So two pi over three, and then four pi over three, and then five pi over three, right? So four times that will happen because I would need the, both the positive and the negative root here. So four times it will happen in my unit circle. If your cotangent is 1, that means your sine and your cosine are the same thing. What angle gives you a, a sine and cosine of the same thing? Pi over 4. Pi over four. Um, and it's positive and negative, so it's all around. So you'd have pi over 4, four. 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. There we go. Now I get it. Now I got the unit circle back. All right, so for this one, you'll notice that we have different, um, we have sine and cosine here. And so think back to when you had uh, polynomials and you solved by factoring. Your goal when you solve by factoring is to actually set it equal to zero and then to factor and set each factor equal to zero. And so that's really your goal when you're solving by factoring. And so I'm still going to move this over. So I'm going to move the three cosine over. So I have cosine of x, sine of x, minus 3 cosine of x equals 0. You'll notice you have a cosine in common. So I'm going to take that cosine out. And I'm left with sine of x minus 3 equals 
zero, all right? And so now I have this factors and I'm gonna set each factor equal to zero. I'm gonna set this cosine equal to zero. And I'm gonna set this sine x minus three equal to zero. And then I'm gonna solve those individually. So I'm looking for where my cosine is zero. So there, from zero to two pi, there are two places where your cosine is zero. If you look at your unit circle, that's at the top, right? Pi over two, your cosine is zero there. And at the very bottom, three pi over two. The other thing I'm gonna look for is where my sine is equal to three. What is my range for my sine? One to negative one, right? So there's never a place where your sign is going to be three. This does not exist. These are your only options. All right, so let's look at this one. He looks crazy, but he's not. So if I were to write this as like x to the fourth plus x squared minus two, right? then you would say, well, I can do x squared plus two and x squared minus one, right? That's my factoring for that. Does that make sense? Right? And so I'm gonna look at that cosine like I would do the, the x. I would say, well, this is cosine to the fourth, so if I can factor x to the fourth like this, I can factor cosine to the fourth like this. So I would say cosine squared of x plus two, cosine, squared of x minus one. So I'm literally just factoring a trinomial. That's all I'm doing. And then I'm going to put each one of those equal to zero. Cosine squared of x plus two equal to zero, right? And then cosine squared of x minus one equals zero. Now, if I try to solve this guy, what do you run into? The squared, right? Yeah, I actually have the positive and negative root of negative two, right? Which is definitely a problem. So this is never going to work. This one, however, I have the square root of one, positive and negative square root of one, yes? So if I add one, I get cosine squared of x equals one, so that means the cosine of x equals positive and negative one. There are two places on the unit circle where that happens. Cosine is one at zero and it is negative one at pi. So my x is going to equal zero and pi here. So there are going to be times when you have different functions and you can factor like we did on those examples there. But then there are going to be times when you have different functions and you cannot factor. And so it's, you've got to isolate them somehow, yet we have an, an issue here where we can't. And so when you can't factor out the co like getting a cosine by itself and getting a sine by itself, then you need to rewrite them in terms of each other. And so in this case, cosine squared should be vaguely familiar to you. Cosine squared is a part of a Pythagorean identity that looks like this. And so if I were to want to say what is cosine squared, well, cosine squared is one minus sine squared. And so I can replace this cosine squared with one minus sine squared. So I'll say two one minus sine squared minus sine minus one equals zero. And then I have a possibility then of um, factoring. So I'm gonna distribute this guy. And then I'll combine my like terms there. Now, if I'm factoring this, I will likely pull out that negative in the front um, just because it makes it easier. So I would say a negative one pulled out and then I would have positive two 
plus sine minus one. And when you do this, if you divide both sides by that negative one, it just kind of goes away. So that's why it's easier to pull the negative out so you can factor a little bit easier. And so then you're factoring, you have two X, two of sine X uh, minus one and sine of X plus one equal to zero. And then you have where you can solve it rather easily. Two sine of X minus one equals zero. Sine of X plus one equals zero. So I'm looking where sine is one half and where sine is negative one. So one half, where's that, where are those? Pi over six, that's my 30 degree angle, right? And then in the second quadrant also, right? And then sine is negative one, just at one point on the unit circle. It's negative one at three pi over two. That's, yeah.